So those who were there on Wednesday night when we had Bible study uh, participated in a form of Bible study known as the hermeneutical circle, which is a fancy name for reading the lesson of the lection, the, the one for the Sunday following, uh, four times and discussing it in four different approaches. So we had a great discussion for a whole hour but I'm not going to be talking about that. Just invite you on Wednesday for adult ed to talk about the next gospel lection or whichever lection we choose out of the, the upcoming lessons uh, to talk for an hour about them. But one thing that we did note as we were talking was, well, what's the context for this particular bit of the gospel according to Luke, chapter 5, the first 11 verses? What, what came before? What sets this up? How well did Jesus know Simon? So, so we're going to talk a little bit about that today because this is the Sunday of call. We have three mentions of the calling of Isaiah, of Paul, and of three of the apostles. And indeed, we are called to be free from our bondage to sin and to take up abundant life in Jesus. So we know the calling of Jesus, and this is the Epiphany story, at his baptism. Jesus went to be baptized because it was the right thing to do, and the Spirit came down upon him and called him to mission. Now, what was that mission? He went out in the desert to think that through and was visited with the temptations. Because being the Son of God and God's chosen one might take a person in different directions. For example, could he be filled with the blessings of God with worldly joys, which was his first temptation? Or, as the king to replace the, the kings of Jerusalem's throne, should he take that position in power and do those kinds of things that were <coughs> admirable in the sight of Israel? And finally, in Luke's gospel, should he stand at the parapet and show everybody, I am the one. Believe in me. It's the Son of God right here before you. Well, Jesus answered properly from Scripture and said none of those things was his mission. And we find out through Epiphany and through our study of the Gospels and through our continuing study in Scripture how Jesus took up this calling as the Son of God. So for context here, let's take a look two weeks ago at the Gospel lesson. We had Jesus going to synagogue and talking about, or reading from Isaiah, the call to heal the sick, give sight to the blind, free the prisoners, bring the kingdom of God back down on earth. Two weeks ago. Now, you can imagine everybody at synagogue going, oh, yeah, good job, Jesus. That's just what we want to do. We're going to be part of that. Last week, we heard that same call from Isaiah to give sight to the blind, to heal the sick, to set the prisoners free, and bring the kingdom down. And then Jesus says, and by the way, remember what happens in Scripture when those kinds of things occur. They occur to people outside the chosen kingdom. They occur to Syrians and people that we don't think we like very well. And so instead of, yeah, Jesus, it was like, what? You want us to do what? For whom? I'm so happy.
Now today, we have Isaiah. Isaiah is being called. We might divide this into two parts. In fact, if you look at your lections carefully, you'll see there's little parentheses, and uh, the lectionary chooser said, well, you don't have to read that second part if you don't want to, because the second part is not our favorite part. The first part is this sinful man, Isaiah, taken up in this beautiful vision, the worshipers of the Lord God, and standing in front of the Lord God fearfully, because you never know, the seeing God face to face might not be, it might be the last thing you do. At any rate, he says he's not worthy, and he's healed with that coal from the fire. His mouth is made clean, and God says, I need someone to go, and Isaiah says, all right, I'll go. End of part one. Great. Go, Isaiah. What's he going to do? Part two. Well, he's going to preach the word and give people sight so they can't see. He's going to make them... Tell them things so they won't understand. He's going to inspire them so they won't follow. He's going to wait through desolation and utter destruction and burning everything until all that's left is that one last little seed in the stump, the seed of the rest of the history of Israel. Gee, you think Isaiah was reconsidering that? Yeah, yeah. And so we have today's lesson. The disciples are called. And so I want to talk about how that happened. Now, in fact, Jesus knows Simon. He's been at Simon's house. Uh, he's been preaching. He has a pretty good following already. And so when he comes to the Sea of Gennesaret to preach the Word of God, people know something about him. They've got expectations. But not Peter so much, Simon, as he was known then. He's tired. He's had a bad day. He's cleaning up and just whatever. So when Jesus gets in his boat to preach, I can imagine that Simon is just shaking his head, going back and finishing, wrapping up the nets, getting ready to go home and drown his sorrows somehow. The sermon is over. And Jesus turns to Simon and says, let's go fish. How can this be? He must think. I've got everything put away, cleaned up, and you want me to go fish, and people have heard you call me, and they're going to watch me go out there again when they know there's nothing to catch, and I'm going to come back skunked time two. So he makes a little quibble. But he says, okay, master, if you say so, maybe I'll put it on him. And, of course, there he goes. I would like to posit that this is Simon's call moment. When he decides to follow Jesus in the face of what must seem to him like certain defeat. I have my life, I'm done with the day, what's done is done, I'm going home, it's done. And Jesus says, let's go fish. That's the moment he has to swallow his pride, swallow his embarrassment, and go forward following the call of Jesus. Now, fishing is what Simon knows how to do. Jesus, initially, when he makes the call, doesn't tell Simon to give it all up and go do something different and uh, have a vision with hot coals and everything. He just says, go fish. Simon knows how to do that. And notice the difference this time. With Jesus at his side, doing what he knows how to do, what his life has been all the way up to that point, success, wild success, Success beyond belief with Jesus at his side. So, the call. We get, let's go fish for people, and 
Off they go. Not only Simon, but James and John as well. Now we may ask, well, that lovely sermon that Jesus sat down in the boat and preached the Word of God. What sermon was that? Can, who, who can tell me what that was? What was he preaching about? We didn't get a clue, did we? We don't know what inspiration Jesus offered when he preached the Word of God in the boat. Didn't hear any of those words. But what do we have in detail? We have the follow-up. We have the action. We have the call. And immediately Luke is telling us, you know, it's not just spectator sport, this following Jesus. This is action. This is action. And when Jesus calls, it may be doing what you think you already know how to do, and it may be in the very place that you're already located, and it may not seem any different except that Jesus is calling you to do it in a new way. And with Jesus at your side, you will be successful beyond your dreams. Now, with the other callings, of course, we get the, the setup, yay, I'll go, and then, oh dear, what's the oh dear moment here? Well, this is what we're going to get for the rest of the year. The oh dear moment for Simon, or Peter, Peter the Rock, Peter the Clod. The, the moment for him, of course, is the arrest and the denial of Jesus three times. We don't know where our call is going to take us. But we are expecting to keep Jesus at our side and preach the word of God wherever, especially where we are. We have to keep discerning. Jesus had to, after the call of the Holy Spirit, had to go out and think, what, how am I to do this? And if you'll follow the Gospels during this season of Luke, you'll see that Jesus doesn't stand out there and go, Son of God, here it is, come on down, it's me. He's not one of those preachers. He's not following the scripture. Jesus is always well, I don't want to say he's putting a stumbling block in the way, but just as he addressed the synagogue, if you want to follow Jesus, you have to make the decision yourself. I'm not going to coerce you. I'm not going to kick your backside and say, you've got to follow me or else. Note to evangelists, this is not coercive. This is good news. And pray to God, the Spirit You'll hear the Spirit, you'll follow the Spirit, and keep Jesus at your side. Because if you remember the end of the temptations, the devil let him go, or Jesus left the devil, and the devil was biding his time. Jesus' ministry and calling still had a long ways to go. May we hear the call and follow and know that Jesus is by our side. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Amen.